Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C++ and today we're going to be learning about classes and a little bit about object oriented programming. So this is pretty much the heart of C++ right here, uh, objects. So you might be wondering, well what are objects if you don't already know? Well basically the best way to look at objects are real life objects. And what do we know about objects? Well they have traits, traits that describe them. Now typically when you're dealing with objects, you can't always represent everything in, let's say, the same data type. Uh, like for an example, in this example, I would like to create a class that deals with BMI. Now it's going to be the BMI of patients. So what kind of things are we going to need to know about each patient? We're, we're going to need to know their name, which is a string. We're going to need their height. Let's store that in an integer. And we're, we're going to need to know their weight, which is a double. So, so we're going to need all that information, we're going to need a series of functions to do all the calculations and whatnot, and all of that will be stored inside of this class. And with this class, we'll create an object, and our objects will be our patients, that's what they'll represent, and basically we'll assign values to them, and we'll be able to return them, find out what their BMI is in this class. So this is going to be a lot, so most likely this will be a two, if not a three part video but hopefully I can just do a two. So we're going to need to well create some objects here. So for the first thing uh, first things first let's include string here because that kind of give away that we're going to need strings and well the very first thing that we're probably going to do is prompt the user for their name their height and their weight. So uh, we'll have a, a string name that comes first so string name then we'll have a C out that will say, please, whoops, I'll just have it say, enter your name. And you know what, I should declare all three variables up here. So string name, uh, int height, and double weight. Pretty simple. So we've done all this before, so this is easy peasy stuff right here. So C in name, and then we'll have another C out that will pop out, that'll ask, that'll prompt the user enter your height and the formula for calculating BMI is uh, using it uses both inches and pounds so we're gonna ask them to please do it in inches uh, sorry about this example if you watched my C sharp playlist you know that I'm doing the same example from there but I made up this example so I really like it this this is a hundred percent my idea just so you know I didn't take it from class or a textbook or anything. This is my idea. And enter your weights. And uh, that'll have to be in pounds. There we go. And then see in weights. Okay. So now we prompted the user for the three variables. They'll enter each of them in. And now we have them. So now can we create our object now? Well, we can't yet because we have to first make our class. Now, tip, now uh, uh, you can make a class inside your main CPP, but you'll probably never do that. Classes are typically created in, a, in separate files. So what you could do is right-click source files, click add, and now it's off screen. How do I get it in screen? Hold on here. There we go. So right-click source files, click add and then we see class there and that's gonna prompt you for a bunch of information but I want you to see what it's doing when it's creating the class so I'm gonna go manual instead so instead what I want you to do is just go to source files go to add the new item then let's manually add in a CPP file now the name of your class will be associated with whatever that class will be dealing with and ours will be BMI and you typically capitalize the first letter in a class name so, but this is just BMI, so all three letters will be capitalized. But if you're doing like rectangle, per se, you, you just talk about rectangle like that. But mine's going to be BMI, and this is a .cpp file. And I'll click Add. And we're going to need one more file, a header file. So now let's add that in, so another new item, and let's click H right here. And we'll call it the very same thing, BMI.h. Now we'll click Add. Oh my goodness, this is already a bunch of stuff, isn't it? Oh geez. Okay, so now we're in our header file. So let's actually work in our header file a little bit first, since this is where our class information will go. So the header file 
typically what this is if you remember in my past tutorials when we were creating functions in our main CPP we would make the declarations up here and then the definitions down here likewise the header file kind of think about it kind of think about it as it's what's at the top uh, is where your function uh, declarations will go and your CPP file will be the function definitions I hope I spelled all that correctly. So now, uh, in both the CPP and the main, the class CPP, so BMI.CPP and the main.CPP is going to have to include our header file. So that's something we're going to have to do first, just just to remember. So up here, let's go down two spaces, type out include again, but this time instead of using the little hairpin thingy majiggers, we're going to use our quotes. And for me, it types in automatically BMI.H. Now let's go into our bmi.cpp here, and here we'll also type out include bmi.h. Now inside bmi.cpp, are we going to have to also put the include iostream and the using namespace std and whatnot? No, because we're going to actually do that in our .h file. And because we're going to be doing that in our .h file, it won't be necessary to put it in our bmi.cpp. So, but it's still necessary to do it on our main.cpp because other stuff is going to be going on in there. So you still need to have your IO stream and all that here. So uh, don't be fooled by that. So you don't need to put these guys or this guy in your bmi.cpp, but you do in your header file. So let's go down here and let's first include IO stream. Then we're going to include string. Uh, so that's good and then using namespace std so there we go now after all of this uh, in order to declare this as I guess a header file the next thing we're gonna have to do is type out uh, a pound sign followed by if in def which is kind of short for if not defined so I F N D E F then after that, type out the name of the header file in all caps, but instead of putting a dot before the H, you put an underscore. So you go BMI underscore H. Then under this, type out define after a pound sign, and the same thing, BMI underscore H. And then at the bottom, end if in all lowercase. So that's all we have to do there. And then inside all, all of this, we'll go our class. So, well, let's actually learn how to create our class now. So in order to create our class, just type out the word class, followed by whatever you want to call it. Well, we call this file BMI, so let's stick to continuity and just call it BMI. Then have an opening curly brace and a closing curly brace. Now you might have remembered, uh, back in the, maybe the very first tutorial, or maybe the second tutorial when I was talking about semicolons, how you usually put them at the end of every line of code, and one example that you almost never use them is after curly braces, like with loops, if statements. Well, with classes, you do put the semicolon there. And as you can see, that got rid of that little error that was right there. So you do put them there. And oh my goodness, you're going to get confusing errors if you don't have them there. Because uh, they really, really don't make any sense. Okay, so now we have our class called BMI. So what's the first thing we're going to do with this class? Well, the first thing that we're going to have to define in there are, are our member variables. And basically what our member variables are is the information that's what we're going to be computing inside of this class. So we're going to need two access modifiers that we're going to be typing out. The first one is public, colon, so type out public with a colon. Then after this, type out private with a colon. Now, um, probably the only aspect of object-oriented programming I'll get into in this tutorial, both parts, is going to be encapsulation. And basically what encapsulation allows you to do is privatize certain information inside of your class so that they can't be accessed from any other files that you'll have, you know, to keep it from being tampered with. So typically our member variables, which is the information that will hold the information for that corresponding object, will be private. And the reason is because you don't want them to be changed elsewhere in the program, unless specifically, you know, unless you access one of the functions up here. So typically our functions, our function or declarations will go in our public, 
while our member variables will go into private. But there are exceptions. Just bear that in mind. There are exceptions. Sometimes you'll have a function in your private as well. But we'll just stick, stick it uh, here for now because we want to stay basic. So these are going to be our member variables. So what are the member variables that we're going to need? Well, if we go back to our main.cpp, it's going to be these three pieces of information, of course. So we're going to need a name, height, and weight. So if we go back to our header file, let's uh, create a string, and let's call it new height instead. Then we're going to create an integer for new height. And did I call this one new height? Oh, I'm sorry. New name. And then our la last one would be double new weight. There we go. Now we have our three member variables. So can we create our object now? No, because none of these member variables are being used. Not to mention we're not using these variables either. So what good is our class? So the very first function I'm going to show you is what's called the default constructor. Now the only thing the default constructor ever does is set your member variables to their null states. Basically, if it's a string, it'll be an empty string. If it's numerical data types, you set it equal to zero, whatever. So uh, how do you write out your default constructor? All the, uh, for constructors, deconstructors, which we'll get into, you never put void or anything like that like we've done with other functions. Instead, all you do is type out the name of the class. So BMI, and then your little parentheses there in the semicolon. So that's going to be our default constructor. So, well, we declared it. So should we write our definition? I think we should. So let's go into our BMI.CPP. Now we've already included the BMI.H, so this entire CPP file here can read everything in the header file, including our member variables here. So let's go up here and actually write out our function definitions. So typically with our definitions, we would just copy uh, the name of the function here, BMI. So I'll just call it BMI and uh, just do something like that, right? Well, this isn't going to work. As we can see, we have a whole bunch of errors. So, how do we actually access the functions inside of that class? Well, in order to access it, what we're going to have to do is, well, type out the name of the class first. So that's going to be BMI. Then we have to type in two semicolons. Or not semicolons, regular colons. And basically, this the technical, technical name for these colons is scope resolution. And as you can see, after we type them out, we can now see uh, all the information that we have inside that class. Everything from the member variables to the functions that we have. So all we have is the constructor, so I'll highlight that, press tab, then have our uh, parentheses, then our curly braces. Now, since now that we know that we're accessing this class and that we can see the member variables, we now know that we can use them inside this little function. So uh, all we're going to do is set our member variables to their null states. Now, uh, with other programming languages, this may be different, but in C++, you don't need to uh, initialize strings because the string class, when you create a string like this, they're automatically set equal to a null state. So you do not need to worry about those. You don't need to do that. So all we have to do is worry about the numbers. So if we go in here, let's set new heights equal to zero and new weights equal to, and since this is a double, I like to go 0, 0.0 just to be safe. And that's all it does. It sets our member variables equal to their null states. So is that good? Well, I guess it does, it does something, but it's not doing anything with these variables. What if we want to use the variables that we're going to be typing in? I mean, we, we don't want a bunch of zeros and empty strings to pop up when we call our object. Well, what we can do is use what's called an overload constructor. So I can go down here, and type out an overload constructor, and basically what an overload constructor does, it, it's a different way of basically calling the same function. So we're not calling it, but we're uh, basically you just type it out again, and it's kind of like the way we implement it. 
So we can't just have it like this because we already have a BMI constructor that has no parameters. So in order to make it overloaded, we can just add parameters to it. So what parameters do we want to add in? Well, our three pieces of information, of course. So what are the three pieces of information? A string, an integer, and a double. And just like with functions before in the declarations, you don't have to give the names. All you have to do is just give the data types. So string, int, and double. Now, are we going to be passing these in as reference? No, and the reason is because we're going to be in, inside this overload constructor, we're going to be setting our member variables equal to whatever we pass in, which are these three right here. So it's not going to be changing these values. So you don't have to worry about because we're already changing them right here. So yeah, well, there's no passing by reference, so don't worry about that. So overload constructor. So let's go in our BMI.cpp and create our overloaded constructor. So it's still BMI. But this time, we're going to need to make our corresponding variables. So I'll call it string name. I won't give them unique names. I'll just keep calling them name, height, and weight. Uh, so we have string name, int, height, and double weight. So these three pieces of information will be equal to whatever we pass in as parameters, which will be these three. Then inside our uh, overloaded constructor, we're going to set each of our member variables equal to whatever we passed in. So this time we will access new name and we set it equal to name. Then we'll access the new uh, height, set it equal to height, and then we'll access new weight and set it equal to weight. So that's all. So we just set our member variables equal to whatever we passed in. So that's pretty easy. So shall we create our um, object now? Yeah, I guess I'll do that, and then I guess I'll call it quits on this tutorial, so it doesn't get too long. We're already over time. Sorry about that. So let's go down here and actually learn how to create our object. So in order to create our object, instead of putting a data type like we typically do for a variable, type out the name of the class, which we called was BMI, and let's call it students underscore one, something like that, and then a semicolon. Now when you do this, as soon as you create your object, it automatically uses the default constructor and it will go into your header file, it'll look for your default constructor, and then it'll set all your member variables equal to their null states. So, however, if you wish to use your overloaded constructor, you can add parentheses to the end and then throw in name, height, and wait. So then it'll use your overload constructor. Remember, if it doesn't match any of the constructors that exist, like there, then you get your errors because it says there's no matching, you know, function inside the the argument list. So keep it like this, and then you can use your overloaded constructor. So it'll pass in name, height, and weight into your header file. It'll find the overload constructor, pass them in as your parameters go in your CPP and then set the member variables equal to what you passed in on this side. So that's really cool. So that's about it for this part. In the next part we're going to go over accessor functions and muta mutator functions which will allow us to get this information and change them. So I'll see you in the next part.